Well, predicting a tech future has got to be one of the funnest things to do. Nah, it's the best thing to do. First off, let's just talk about how hard this is to predict accurately. I mean, even when the internet first came out, people were very confused and had a hard time understanding what the internet was. Allison, can you explain what internet is? What do you write to it, like mail? See what I mean? We usually don't understand the scope of the change that's about to happen. We don't have a frame of reference. We don't have a context. So we usually miss the most important points. Having said that, someone was fantastically accurate in predicting the future when it came to smartphones. Meet science fiction author David Gerald. And in 1999, he said this. I've got a cell phone, a pocket organizer, a beeper, a calculator, a digital camera, a pocket tape recorder, a music player. Sometime in the next few years, all of those devices are gonna meld into one. It will be a box less than an inch thick and smaller than a deck of cards. This size will be determined by what's convenient to hold, not by the technology inside. The box will have a high res color screen, a microphone, a plug for handsets and earphones, a camera lens, wireless connectivity, cell phone and beeper functions, a television and radio receiver, a digital recorder, etc., 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 etc. You get the point. The man hit a home run, a grand slam. You might think uh, in retrospect that that was easy to do. Of course, we could have figured that out, but many, many people were way off and did not see that coming. Now, He's also predicted the future from now. What do you think he said? Well, Gerald has obliged us by releasing some thoughts on robots and predictions for AI, noting he feels it is inevitable. Sensibly, Gerald points out that true AI isn't possible in the near future, but robots will soon possess capabilities beyond what any human assistant can do. The robot will require a level of data gathering, pattern recognition, information processing, and decision making that will surpass that of a human assistant. Robots will become dance partners, they will play basketball, they will pace joggers, they will walk dogs, they will take on any task that can be defined by a specific set of rules. Robots will assist in the care of the sick and elderly, they may even end up delivering the mail. Gerald goes on to say that at that point, the robot becomes a life manager. Cleaning house will be the least of its responsibilities. The robot will connect with all of your wireless devices and monitor what TV shows you want to watch, what toppings you want on your pizza order, what bills you need to pay, and so on. It will likely manage your finances as well, so that filing out your tax returns will be as simple as saying, Robbie, file my tax return. Now as for true artificial intelligence, Gerald says this. The development of true robots will likely take at least another decade, probably longer. The process will be slow and painstaking. The development of the self-driving car is a good example of the kind of caution necessary. And that deliberate pace of development will give humans plenty of time to get used to the idea. But Gerald does end with a warning. Quote, here's the singular caution. We must not give up the most essential part of being human, the ability to connect with each other. Yes, a robot can rock a baby, but I'm pretty sure the baby would much prefer to be rocked by a human. If we give that up, we create a generation that will never know what it is to be loved. I should add that Gerald actually predicted more than just what I read. He predicted Google Translate, the Google Assistant, the whole idea of uh, being able to walk around and your phone would automatically uh, make recommendations for different restaurants or even make reservations for you. That's happening now and that's relatively recent. The fact that he predicted that 20 years ago is uh, impressive indeed. Now it's sad to say that Mr. Gerald just passed away a couple of weeks ago and I thought this was uh, an appropriate time to bring up the subject because who doesn't love to talk about tech future? But this is really hard to do and uh, you guys know that I've talked about it a lot where I think the next big shift, and I don't mean like an incremental shift or a new gadget, I'm talking about a new technology shift that really changes the way we behave, like the internet, the smartphone, uh, you know, the personal computer, all that kind of stuff. And I really think it has to be a, a technology or an ability that uh, opens up the internet for us. So instead of being locked in to all these communication devices through these tiny little screens, it needs to be something that opens us up, whether that is an earpiece in conjunction with uh, 
you know, a uh, contact lens that's all IP connected. I don't know. But again, I'm using my internet frame of reference. So it may be something just completely wildly different. And someone 20 years from now will be looking back on this video and going, ah, that guy had no clue what he was talking about. If you think you know what you're talking about, let me know in the comments below or on Twitter. I'm active on Twitter. I read pretty much everything and respond to many of you. And I still read all the comments. Talk to you later. Like me, do you like ultra thin phone cases? If so, you just need protection against everyday wear and tear. And our sponsor has super thin cases, priced just right for all major phones. You can go to minimalcase.com, use our coupon code AA20, and get 20% off an already sweet deal.